In the first of the videos, John outlines his experience with clover, with legumes on the hill country and high country property. He describes now in the 50s and 60s, he was excited by the results of over sowing and top dressing, but then a grass dominant phase arrived. And finally, what happened when they started putting in pure legumes and the growth rates achieved by the lambs that they had on the property post weaning. I've been around a while, I guess you can see that, and I was part of the development phase of the 1960s and 70s, well, uh, started with my father and continued, and we thought we were in heaven, we threw some seed around, a bit of fertiliser, and we had um, clover up to our knees, we thought it would never end, but it did very quickly. It's simply because once Clover had proved extremely successful in that environment. It had signed its own death warrant. And so Brown Top said, well, thank you very much. That's very generous. I'll have that. And so now throughout the New Zealand hill and high country, Brown Top is the dominant plant. As that clover sort of wave went away, we went back to you know, some pretty mediocre performance. Our lambing percentages were sort of 80s, 90s, sneaking up to 100%. And so I started some trial work at home, trying to work out what the hell was going on. It's 700 years, individually uh, tagged and weighed, and we worked on them all th sorts of treatments through trace elements and trenches and, and God knows what. Did a little bit of work around the pasture side as well, trying to establish uh, what happened to pasture over the years, some ME stuff and so on. But really couldn't find my way through the other end. There just didn't seem to be anything that we could do that was going to change it dramatically. And it was all obviously all about nutrition, not, not these other things. In the 1990s, continued with some work around Hoggard Ilthrift and trying to work out why our lambs wouldn't grow. We bought an irrigated farm near Mayfield and sent all our lambs down there and they performed very, very averagely. And so we did a lot of trial work down there following individual lambs, individual treatments and so on. At the conclusion of that was about the time they started to release their findings about endophytes and grasses. So in the 2000s, the crosslot drill arrived, a great beast of a piece of machinery, and we put it to use and started cultivating some of our hills that for reasons of wind blow, terrain and so on, were not suitable for cultivation. And so the Grassland's Conference has viewed the first of those. We were tremendously excited. We had pastures that in the first year looked like a dairy farm pasture, straight out of Brown Top and Matagoga. It was an exhilarating ride. The next year they looked like a sheep pasture, and the third year we said, well, why the hell did we bother? That was pretty sobering, really. So what was happening was all those old uh, brown top plants, uh, there was a host of seed, came back through, and they were just much better performers in that environment than the ryegrasses adapted for high-producing dairy farms throughout the, throughout the country. So we really didn't know what to do, but I, I thought, well, Maybe what we can do is just put a straight legume pasture in and uh, we'll be able to spray over the top and just keep rebuffing these grass species as they come and then, then later on put the grass species themselves in. So we did that, but almost immediately I thought, now is this a transition to where we want to go with grasses or is this a destination in itself? So I got an old uh, old crate off the back of a truck and I tossed it in the middle of this paddock and I started making a few um, uh, pasture cuts. I only did it for about four times in the year. But to our absolute astonishment, we were generating about 13,500 to 14,000 kilograms of dry matter. And this was high quality dry matter. So we got some lambs and we weaned them early. There was about 50 lambs or so and they were from 14 kilograms to about 28 kilograms. We sliced them into three, and, and so there were the 14 to 18s, the 19s to 24s, 24s to 28s. And we, we just left them there and followed them through. 
at the end of a couple of months or whatever it was, to my absolute astonishment, these little 14 to 18 kilograms that all the experts told us we shouldn't wean grew at exactly the same rate as the 24 to 28 kilogram lambs, or somewhere around 250 grams a day. That was, that was a huge moment. So that's when we decided there really was something pretty promising about legumes in our part of the world. They were no longer just something that you put in after you decided how many kilograms of ryegrass or coxit you wanted to put in.